Hi guys, so um, today I'm working in a place that you might recognise. I did some work back here. One of my first videos actually was uh, on this job, doing some metal conduit work. And I've been called back because the customer said that the sockets are tripping. Uh, they've been doing a bit of jet washing, <laughs> I believe. So I think probably some water's got into one of the sockets. So I'm just gonna take the covers off and check them. The customer did reset the RCBO and actually it reset fine now. Yesterday it wasn't, but of course today it, it's fine. So I assume that probably there was some moisture got in there and it was tripping because of that. And now it's dried out and it's not um, tripping anymore. But I'm just gonna take all the covers off, check if there is any moisture getting into the sockets. And if there is, dry them out and then seal them all up. Uh, but one of the first things I noticed was this socket here has an issue. So I'm just going to show you what's going on with this. So you can see here the socket has clearly got some burning going on on both of the socket outlets. Um, the switches are working okay, but it seems like they've plugged something in which has been quite heavily loading and it's just overheated and burnt out the socket so i'm going to replace this cover i've brought some spare ones with me these are the the bg um weatherproof sockets it looks like they've taken the clips off here to actually seal it which is a little bit annoying but anyway i'm going to just change that whole socket and what i might do as well is just put some silicon around the tops of these because although it's an ip rated socket if water drips down here probably it can get in at the top there. It's very difficult when terminating metal conduit or even PVC conduit into a socket outlet like this. How do you make sure that it stays waterproof? I don't know of any particular devices that, that are designed to keep this sealed. The only way I could think of doing it otherwise would be to um, actually cut the conduit short, put a compression gland, a PVC compression gland in there, and then have a small piece of cable going up into the conduit, but then it won't look very nice. And the whole protection of the conduit, the me mechanical protection that the conduit offers will be null and void really. So let me know in the comments what you think, if you've got any suggestions on that, I'd love to hear. This switch, which is broken. Um, so it looks like just this little plastic nib has yeah, snapped basically. So I'm gonna need to get a new switch for this as well. And this is an MK one and only fitted it about a year ago so it's a bit annoying that it's broken already. I'm not sure if um, if a BG one would have been better but you'd think MK quality would be a lot better than, than BG. There's another socket here which has got the same issue this bit of um, overheating happening here and it's starting to bulge away. This one seems fine, so I don't know what they've been plugging in here, but clearly it's overloading the uh, the uh, sockets, which is a bit annoying. And they've taken all these little, um, they've taken all of these off. So the whole point of these is that it clips down and seals the socket cover over the plug, but they've kind of basically um, removed that because they obviously found it annoying to have to unsnap it every time um, yeah a little bit silly so I'm just going to flick the RCBO off and then take the cover off of the socket here and see what's going on So I've opened this cover up now and I did actually put silicon in these before so they should be pretty well sealed. Um, I can't see any issues with the actual socket at the back here. Everything looks okay so it's probably just the front that's burnt but I've got a replacement one so I'm going to just fit a replacement socket cover on. One here, one of these uh, BG Storm. I can just use the front cover and then I don't need to change the back. So that'll sort that out.
going to do a earth loop impedance test on this socket now, and then do an RCD test. This is my Fluke 1664FC, great bit of kit, absolutely love this tester. So do earth loop impedance test. And 0 0.451, excellent. And then we'll do an RCD test. And I'll go to the RCD and just reset it. This does an auto test. That's good, so we've got, um, this is the five times, so 18.4 and 28.4, 18.4 and 8.7 for one times, and greater than 2,000 milliseconds for the half times. So this is the one that he said he thought the water had got into, but it looks okay. However, it doesn't look like I put much silicon on this one. So I'm gonna add a big blob of silicon around that and also just drill out the drain hole just to make sure that if any water does get in in the future, it doesn't stay there. And this socket is our end of line, so I'm gonna do ZS test on here as well just to check the uh, right okay. Ah, okay, so this socket is dodgy. One point eleven which is fine, but this side you can see the LED is not lit up and there's no saying that the neutral is not there basically. Life to earth is, is good. Neutral to earth, there's nothing. Life to neutral, there's nothing. So there's obviously a little break in the neutral inside this socket. So I'm gonna change that color. So of course we always follow safe isolation procedures. So before I take that socket off, I'm just gonna make sure it's dead. So first check my tester with my proving unit and let it run through all the different voltages. That's fine. Get yeah. the socket out there that was live. Life to neutral, life to earth, neutral to earth, nothing. So, so that's good. So I'm going to take the cover off now and then replace this socket on it with a new one. These fiddly little screw covers. But they do make it look slightly smarter 
and they obviously help with the IP rating of the thing, so I can't complain too much. So I'm just going to double check this again because you never know whether you're poking it in the front of the um, socket if you might not have got a good contact or something. So I'm just going to check that directly on the terminals now. And that's absolutely fine. So I'm going to go ahead and disconnect this. So I don't know if you do this, but I was always taught to double over my conductors like that so that you've got more of a contact surface with the copper into the terminal. So I always double them up if they're a single cable like this. If it's two cables and you've got two wires going in the back, then I don't usually. I just um, have them as single wires because it's too tight to fit in two doubled up conductors usually. But there's a little tip for you, let me know in the comments if that's what you do as well. So we'll test this again now, and see if it works again. So we've got a light, that's a good start. Got voltage, live to neutral, live to earth, neutral to earth, very good. Let's do a loop test. This is the no trip one, so it takes a bit longer. 1.08, that's good. And let me just check the other side. So this is the dodgy socket that we have just removed and I'm just going to do a quick tear down and see what's going on inside in order to see if it's a simple problem or more complicated, if it would be repairable or not and if it's something that might be repeated in other BG socket outlets. So what we'll do is just remove these screws here. Bearing in mind it was this side that had the problem. And actually it's not going to be repairable because these lugs are holding it back and it's riveted on. So we're going to have to drill these out in order to take that cover off. You can see here it's completely burnt out. I'm not sure what exactly is the problem. It might be the actual neon uh, that was the issue. This 
is one of the terminals. Ah, uh, yeah, like that looks like a little kind of small resistor or something like that to protect the neon. And it might be that that, that resistor has just exploded. Um, if we look at the contacts here, again, very much blackened. The switch terminals look okay, although the neutral actually, uh, that's melted. Um, how did that, how did that go? If it goes like that. Hmm. Might be there was a loose connection on the neutral because it looks like that goes over like that and then the wire grips in. Yeah, so you can see like these ones, it's the same. The, the so it could be that it was actually badly manufactured and that was that was not in properly or something. Hard to know. Let me know in the comments what you think. Definitely needed replacing though. So I've been asked to install a light in this toilet thing here because they're going to be putting a, a ceiling uh, above this. So what I'm thinking, looking at the nearest power source, obviously it's going to have to be a wall light because I want to do it before they put the ceiling in. So I'll probably put a wall light up here. And then just on the opposite side, this is actually a socket on its own circuit. So what I'm thinking to do is come out of the top of that socket in some flexi conduit, run along there, through that hole, through to the other side, flexi conduit along here, and maybe onto some solid conduit, run it along into a switch fuse connection unit uh, and then from that switch fuse connection unit up to the light with some conduit. <laughs> Thank you.